In this video, I'm going to share with you one of the major flaws with atheism. One of the major flaws with atheism? Okay. Okay, one of the major flaws with atheism. Okay, one of the major flaws with atheism. Okay. As many of you know, most atheists, if not all, they do not believe in God. Well, that's a doozy of a claim there. Not sure if I can accept that one. They do not believe in God. They do not believe in God? Okay, okay. They do not believe in God. Okay. Because they have not been able to find satisfactory proof that a God exists. And I'm going to share with you why this approach is essentially a dead end. Their approach is first, I must find this proof. Then I will become a believer. Yes. What else am I going to do? Fake it till I make it? I got to be convinced first, right? I can't start believing without being convinced. That's what believing is, being convinced. You have to prove to me that God exists then I will follow him. Yeah, I'm not even at that point. I know lots of things and people that I'm pretty sure exist that I definitely would not follow. If you convinced me this God exists, I would want to know a bit more about it before I decide to dedicate my life to it. I think that's a fairly reasonable standard. Then I will follow his ways, his teachings, his commandments. Then I will maybe join a religion, Islam, Christianity, the Baha'i faith, Judaism, uh, Buddhism, etc. Wait, so what God are we talking about here? Which God am I being convinced of? Just any general purpose God or God-like entity? Yeah, again, that's kind of why I would like to know a bit more before I go making a decision that affects my entire life. Even just to avoid ignorance, you know? If I go join Islam and then it turns out, no, I had to accept Jesus as the Messiah and God himself to be led into heaven, well, that seems kind of counterproductive. So yeah, I'm not just going to put on a blindfold and point to a religion on a list. After I have evidence there's this God, I'll be some sort of a deist. Maybe even sort of a generic theist, but I'll still need to figure out which, if any, of the current human religions are actually true, which is going to require its own set of justifications. Okay, first I must find this evidence and proof which satisfies me that a god exists, then I will follow him. Okay, until I don't find this evidence, I will, I will be a disbeliever, essentially. Again, this isn't even a decision I'm making. I don't have a choice in this. Either I'm faced with some sort of evidence, including arguments that convince me, that turn me into a believer, or I'm not going to be a believer. And I just happen to have a pretty high standard of evidence, so what it takes to convince me to believe something is good evidence. Right. And I'm going to share with you why this approach is a dead end. It's a recipe for failure. You will never find satisfactory evidence that a god exists. Okay, I did not expect that sentence to end there. You will never find satisfactory evidence that a god exists. Okay. Trying to look for evidence of god is a dead end. Sure. I pretty much agree with you. That, of course, includes things like the emotions felt by believers, the experiences that they attribute to God talking to them or whatever, visions, dreams. I don't find any of that satisfactory when it's told to me, and I don't think I would find it satisfactory if I experienced it either. I've had the experience while sitting in a dark room late at night that there's someone standing behind me. That doesn't mean there's a ghost standing behind me. It's not satisfactory evidence. Yeah, no, I love this. This video is great so far. <laughs> Trying to look for satisfactory evidence of God is a recipe for failure. You won't come to believe in God that way. That way being the way to believe every other objective claim ever. It's refreshing. You don't hear this very often. I wish you'd talk to all those people who were constantly bringing up like the Kalam cosmological argument and design arguments and stuff like that, because I think they need to hear this. The knowledge of God is not something that is intellectually acquired before you decide to follow him or not. The knowledge of God is a knowledge that is experienced. Okay, so it's a feeling. You believe because feels. Well, I think emotion is responsible for 99% of all human stupidity, so no, thanks. You ever seen someone who believes something really, really dumb or does something really stupid and irresponsible? Yeah, most of the time that's because of emotion, because of experience. The people who believe the birds are robot spies sent by the government to peek in their windows are believing because of experience. The people who believe the voices in their head that tell them to hurt themselves are believing because of experience. The people who take a whole bunch of DMT and then believe the machine elves are communicating with them believe that because of experience. Probably a much stronger experience than yours, in fact. That doesn't mean they should believe it, although their brains are so screwed up by drugs that they do. This is not a way to establish the truth of a claim. After you follow him, after you obey his commandments, his teachings, his blueprint of life. Uh-huh, so fake it till you make it then. Even if you don't believe, just join my religion, do my religious rituals, and maybe eventually you'll emotion yourself into believing. 
Yeah, that works on some people. I know it does. I'm not those people. I just went to see what it was about, and it was so nice. There was such a sense of community and love, and I could just feel something in the air. And they told me this quotation from their book, and it spoke to me. It was such a lovely thought. So insightful. People get the same thing at Tony Robbins self-help conferences. They get that from multi-level marketing scams. Emotions can lead you to any stupid idea. They lead millions of people to all kinds of mutually contradictory dumb ideas all the time. I mean, you yourself just named a bunch of different religions that people follow for emotional reasons. Those religions are not compatible with each other. But the fundamental reasoning people have to believe all of them is identical. Now, I know you're Baha'i, and so you probably believe all these religions are compatible with each other, that they're all part of one overall revelation from God, that they're all small pieces of God's revelation, but the problem is, the claims they make and the rules they prescribe are in contradiction to one another. They are not compatible. That should show you just how bad emotion really is at determining truth, but given your religion, you probably don't accept what I'm saying right now. So again, apply it to non-religious things, or things from religion that aren't part of the sort of accepted Baha'i series of revelations. It is a knowledge that is experienced through the process of alchemy. I found this comment on your video that says you use alchemy as a synonym for transformation, which is a remarkably confusing way to use that word. I don't know why you don't just say transformation. Okay, Christ said that we have been created in his image. And so as we advance in this journey of alchemy, of dying to the human condition, to human imperfections, being recreated in his divine perfections, love, compassion, honesty, trustworthiness, patience, etc., as we die to resentment and we are recreated in forgiveness, which is the quality of God, for example. We begin to experience God within us. And this is what I consider to be, and many of my uh, religious uh, homies consider to be the evidences of God within you. Well, that's great for you. You know, you do you. Have fun. But I thought we were talking about the main flaw of atheism. Why are we talking about the main flaw of your religion? As you die to the human condition, and as you are recreated in his image through the process of alchemy, this journey of life, these are the evidences of proof uh, of God within you. Yes, I know. You just said that. It doesn't make it more compelling if you say it twice. It is a knowledge that is experienced after you obey him, not before. You really want to get that freebie, huh? I swear, just join my religion and then you'll find out it's true. Mm, no thanks, I've heard this marketing gimmick before. I don't have unlimited time in the day. I can't just convert to every religion and try it on and see how it feels. I mean, I know how I would feel, I would feel stupid and take it off again, but... For people who don't have that, I think that they would probably feel something for most religions. Or maybe not most, I've heard a lot of stories of people shopping around and going, Ah, this one didn't really work for me, and that one, eh, it didn't feel quite right, but this one, that was the ticket. Stick any religions you want in the blanks there. So yeah, maybe not most religions, different people have different flavors they like better, but probably there's a lot that would appeal to each individual emotional person. And I'm not just talking about religions, either. Like I said, multi-level marketing, political movements, conspiracy theories, racial supremacy groups. Anything that evokes those feelings, that you belong, that you're right, that you feel loved and accepted, and that you have some kind of guidance and direction and purpose and understanding. So yeah, I'm not just referring to religion. There are so many things you can believe just because it makes you feel a certain way. In fact, literally infinite things. Okay? It is impossible to obtain the evidences of God, to experience the evidences of God within you before you obey him. Yeah, and that's a really good reason to think it might be bullshit. So what you want to tell me in this video is that we should just do special pleading for God. We should not treat God like any other claim that requires evidence for its truth before we accept it. And then you want to tell me about evidence that makes it even less reasonable to believe in God. And by this you hope to accomplish... what? So what happens when you meet a person who doesn't think their personal feelings are satisfactory evidence of anything, other than their feelings? What if I tell you that those feelings that you feel are not satisfactory evidence? What if I tell you feelings are as uncompelling to me as a bad argument is? As evidence, I mean. What if I were to follow the steps that you prescribe, whatever it is, you know, read the book, obey the commandments for a week, for a month, for a year, and then it produces a feeling, and my response is, hmm, that's interesting, this sequence of actions produces a feeling in humans. This seems like an interesting psychological phenomenon, I should look into this. Then what? I gotta wonder what the goal of this god is, anyway. Why this constant fucking around? 
It's like, you're there. You're a god. You created me to do a thing. Okay, come up to me. Give me the goddamn list. Tell me you're there. Make it clear. Tell me what you want. We'll talk about it. We'll make a deal. We'll move on. But no, that's never what it is. It's never direct. It's never clear and unambiguous. It's always got to be some kind of a thing where you join the religion with the goal of trying to make yourself feel a feeling, and then you feel the feeling, and you go, okay, it must be true then. I'm just going to read this arbitrary book that some random person handed me and think that's the meaning of my life. Is it ridiculously fallacious and uncompelling on purpose? I guess it's possible. I can think of an awful lot of better explanations for why it might be that way, though, than that God is actually real and wants to do it this way. Okay, this is why atheists will never obtain the proof of God, because they refuse to obey before obtaining this intellectual knowledge. Uh, yeah, I don't obey people who I don't think exist. Right. Look, if you come to me and you tell me, listen, World War III just started. We got to go to the front lines right now. We're fighting um, Bhutan. The, they're, they're taking over the world. Those damn Bhutan, Bhutanians, Bhutanese. Bhut and so we go to the front line on the border of Bhutan. And it's just us two. And you say, okay, there's the general. Do what he tells you to do. And I'm like, what? There's no, what are you talking about? Where's the war? And you're like, it's right here. Look at all these people. Look, the general's yelling at you right now to go invade Bhutan. You got to go conquer Trashy Yangtze. That's the most important place to conquer right now. Here's a gun. Go do. My answer is going to be no. I'm sorry. That's stupid. No, I'm going home. This is really dumb. And as I'm walking away, you'll probably yell after me. See, this is your biggest problem. You require this intellectual knowledge before you obey. <laughs> Check this out. In the Bible, we read, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And he that knoweth not that I exist, I will hide myself from him and intentionally deceive him and demand that he listeneth to random other people who say that they speak for me, despite it being completely impossible to have satisfactory evidence to show that they actually do. He should follow whichever man berateth him most loudly for asking for good reasons, because the Bible's all about following the word of man. Okay, maybe you think I should be acting differently. Maybe you don't think my standards of evidence are acceptable or whatever. But please tell me you can at least see why I can't take this shit seriously. Tell me you can at least understand why I have a bit of an issue with this. You see, first you have to love him, and then he will manifest himself to you. First you have to love him, and he says that the sign of love is keeping his commandments. Right, so I have to manipulate myself into feeling some kind of emotion, which is love, for a thing that I don't think exists. And then I have to obey the rules that I don't think were made by a god, I think they were made up by people, so I have to obey what I'm pretty sure is just you. And if I can convince myself to do what you tell me to do all day, and feel love towards an entity I don't think exists, if I can derange myself in this way, then maybe I can derange myself further into having emotions towards this belief, which I already had to in the first place, then maybe I'll feel emotions, which is kind of tautologically true because you're demanding that I already do. You're demanding that my starting point is loving the thing I think does not exist. And if I feel enough emotions, then I'll skip the part where I figure out if the thing's actually true through reason and evidence, and I'll just believe it because feels instead. Which, yeah, if I'm willing to do the first part, I'm probably willing to do the second part. They're literally the same action. Believe the thing is real for no reason. You're telling me that if I believe without a reason that the thing exists, then I'll believe without a reason that the thing exists. I know. Unfortunately, there do seem to be a lot of people out there who are willing to do this, completely tossing all thought, all standards, all concern for the actual truth of the matter out the window, and just relying on emotion and nothing else. I've heard the testimonies of many, many, many of them. You have a video like that of your own, and I'm sure most people can guess the rough outline. I was in a bad place, I felt bad, and then I read some lines out of this book, and that made me feel something, and then I decided to follow the religion, and then that made me feel good, and now my life is better. If you're like me, if you hit rock bottom, you know what I'm saying? You were suffering big time for many years. Nothing worked for you. But then eventually, you hit rock bottom, you crack, and through that crack, the light of the Lord comes in. You're forced to believe. These were magical words with the power to transform you and heal you. For the first time in my life, I started to heal on every level and transform. I have so much certitude. I've, I've witnessed the healing powers, the transformative powers of the Word of God.
Yeah, I had a similar experience where I felt really, really bad for years on end. And what did I do? I moved out of the city, learned how to fix up my house, did some gardening, went for some walks in the trees, met up with the neighbors, and my life transformed! Everything was better! To an insane degree! Total transformation compared to life in the city. I changed something that wasn't working for me, and I experienced a change in my psychological state. No God involved, whatsoever. What does that mean? It means spirituality, while it could possibly have brought about a positive psychological change, wasn't necessary for it, and thus wasn't the only option. It was just a way to achieve the same thing. If it was a way at all, which in my case I kind of doubt, but that's beside the point. And what it does not mean is that the Alberta countryside is some sort of divine being that heals the soul, that loves me and helps me and guides me. No, it's a bunch of dirt and trees and rivers. It means I didn't like what I was doing before, and then I liked better what I was doing later. And then I felt better. And then because I felt better, I was able to make more positive changes. And then because I felt better because of those, I was able to make more positive changes. Wow, but I mean, doesn't that seem like something that would take God's divine power? No. Look, I know that for some people, the change they make in their life is joining a religion, and that's the thing that makes them feel good. I get it. That doesn't make it true. It just means it makes them feel good. It probably encouraged them to make some changes that worked a little bit better for them. Which is probably why you see those people shopping around for religions and saying, eh, this one didn't really work for me, that one didn't really work for me. Partially it's the feeling they get from the story or the atmosphere or the type of religion itself. And part of it, probably, is that different religions require different life changes when you join them, and different things work for different people. Lots of things have that kind of effect on people, not just religions. So I'm sorry, but no, I don't make decisions or declare beliefs about matters of objective external reality based on raw emotion, based on how it makes me feel. How it makes me feel reflects how it makes me feel, and that's it. Okay, so if you keep his commandments, you love him and you keep his commandments, then he will manifest himself to you. In Baha'i scripture, we have a very similar text. Love me that I may love thee. If thou lovest me not, my love can in no wise reach thee. That's a bizarre statement. We're dealing with an all-powerful God, right? His love can do whatever he wants it to do. It's not dependent on me. I mean, I'm not real familiar with Baha'i, but I doubt I'm supposed to be the almighty one here. So again, you have to love me first. You have to obey my commandments first. Otherwise, my love can in no wise reach you. You will not be able to feel my love. You will not be able to experience my love and the evidences of my beauty, of my gifts and bounties. You gotta do what I tell you, or I'm not gonna give you any evidence that I love you or even exist. Okay, hey God, how am I supposed to do what you tell me? You didn't tell me anything. This guy told me something. What am I supposed to do with this? I'm not just gonna base my life around obeying this random YouTube guy. If you want something, tell me what it is. If you want to hide the fact that you love me, sure, do that. In fact, I'd kind of prefer that. Let's take it slow. But at least give me some kind of reason to think you exist in the first place so I have something to work with here. That seems abundantly reasonable. That's step one in love, right? or obedience, thinking there's someone to love or obey. How is it supposed to make any sense to do the love part or the obedience part before that part? At that point, it's just like fucking a waifu pillow. And this message is found across every religion, every divine book. What, believe first, ask questions later? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them. Anyway, yet another reason I'm so confident discarding them until further evidence is presented. Because that sort of thing typically is not necessary for stuff that's true. I have to say again, though, I really do like your approach. It's so helpful to me. It's so much easier to deal with, and it's so much less compelling than people's garbage arguments. Like, I mean, garbage arguments for God's existence are bad enough already. They're not very compelling, but they're much more compelling than this. And they take more time to deal with. You know, because there's something there to deal with. Okay, but if you're an atheist, you won't know about this because you refuse to read divine scripture. I'll read whatever you want, man. Want me to read the hidden words? I'll read it. It's short. Hidden words from the Persian, number 57. O son of dust, beware! Walk not with the ungodly, and seek not fellowship with him, for such companionship turneth the radiance of the heart into infernal fire. Oh, well, fuck you too, then. That doesn't sound like the classic isolation component of brainwashing or anything. 
You know, what's funny is that was the first thing I read when I cracked this book open the first time after I got it. The book's just a collection of little quotes, and I read a bunch more after that, and nothing did it for me like that first one. I opened the book, and I saw exactly what I needed to read. It's gotta be God speaking to me, telling me to fuck off, and telling me you're full of shit. Why would I refuse to read scripture? I've read quite a bit of scripture, and every single time I do, I come out more atheist than when I went in. You want, you want proof. You want intellectual proof that God exists before you turn to his word. Mm, nope. No. Tell me what to turn to. I'll turn to whatever, man. It's all good. This isn't about whether I'll read the book. It's about whether I'll believe it's true. There's a difference. You know that, right? And that's why I'm sharing it with you. Sharing what? Scripture? Okay, thanks. I still don't believe you. Unless you're sharing it with me in the context of convincing me it's true, it doesn't matter. It's just a bunch of stuff you're telling me, assertions you're making, or that you're parroting from whoever actually wrote the book. Let us consider the plant for a moment. That's a solid plant. Six out of ten. Does the plant demand that the sun prove itself first? First before what? The plant doesn't believe stuff. It has no brain. So that it then you know, turns towards the sun to receive its warmth and life-giving rays? No. No, I agree. The plant doesn't need to be convinced of the existence of the sun because the plant has no brain. The plant turns towards the sun because of the structure and chemistry of its cells. The light and the warmth of the sun, as you say, physically acts on the plant, and the plant is physically compelled to turn towards the sun. That's a mechanistic physical process. What's your point? Does the plant turn towards its fellow plants, other plants, and enter into arguments so that, you know, they, they prove the existence of the sun? No. Yeah, it's a plant. I know it's an analogy, but I don't get it. It doesn't do that. It turns towards the sun every day. Well, more like it is turned towards the sun every day. It doesn't have a lot of say in the matter. It's a plant. It commits to the sun every day, and it opens itself up. It commits to the sun? No, it doesn't. It's a plant. It doesn't have commitments. It has leaves. Right? The flower opens itself up, turns towards the sun every day to receive the life-giving rays of the sun every day. Okay, I honestly don't understand the analogy. I don't know why we're talking about mindless plants. Like, we're talking about what mindless plants do as though that has any relevance to what humans do or should do. But okay, yes, I also perceive the sun. I have strong physical evidence for the existence of the sun. I don't need to love and obey whatever book you find most compelling to believe the sun is there. I have satisfactory evidence that there's a sun. If the plant were capable of perception, it also would. And therefore... Thereby growing and reaching its highest, its greatest potentialities. And notice how the plant doesn't turn towards the sun just for one or two days to prove the existence and the power of the sun. Okay, because if it were to do that, it would die. It would not survive. Yeah, that's why the plant is physically compelled by its biology to turn towards the sun. Because it needs sunlight for photosynthesis. That's another physical piece of evidence that the sun is real. What does this have to do with a human reading scripture or obeying you? Okay, this is a mistake a lot of people make, is that they decide to try it out. To pray for one day, pray for two days, uh, recite and meditate and assimilate the word of God one day, two days, and then they realize, oh, it doesn't work. And they basically conclude that God doesn't exist and all of it's nonsense. So even the people who are willing to give it a shot, it still doesn't work a lot of the time. How do you say something like that and not immediately hear how bad it sounds? Also, I still don't understand what you were trying to accomplish with that analogy. That was a terrible analogy. It appears to map in no way whatsoever to the topic of this discussion, and if you kind of force it and twist it to sort of match, it seems to say the opposite of what you want to say. Okay. No. And that is essentially, again, a an approach that leads to failure. Joining the religion, doing all the rituals for a couple of days, and realizing that nothing happened is a path to failure to believe the religion? Yeah. Why should anyone's goal be to believe your religion? I have to say, joining the religion for two days and doing everything it says for two days is already incredibly generous. That's taking you far more seriously than you've earned. 
I have to say, too, if this god is not capable of acting within two days of you joining the religion and praying and assimilating his words and meditating and all this stuff, I think that person's right to think it's probably nonsense. Or this god is just intentionally deceptive. These people make a serious effort to, like, turn on their god brain radios for two days, and god's just silent even so. Well, I guess the third option beyond nonsense and intentionally deceptive is that it's just not that important. I mean, this god character really doesn't seem to take it very seriously. He's not exactly treating it as an urgent matter. So yeah, regardless of what the reason is, it doesn't seem like there's much point bothering. Okay, if you consider your physical body and how you need to eat every day in order to grow, right, from the state of a baby to a child, adolescent, an adult, and also in order to maintain a healthy immune system so that you don't become malnourished and experience deficiency diseases, a weakened immune system, you need to eat every day, correct? So, okay, let's see here. To have apparently any reason whatsoever to think that your god is real, I have to believe your god exists in the first place and love it. I have to obey its commandments, whichever ones you tell me they are, whatever book you hand me. I have to pray every day, meditate every day, assimilate and recite its word every day for a similar amount of time that it takes me to grow from a baby to an adult. If it's not all nonsense, and if this god is not intentionally deceptive, and it really is just a matter of no urgency for it, maybe at that point I'll get some kind of response back. Some reason to think that it's real. After following your preferred commandments for years, what kind of idiots do you take people for? No, this is beyond unreasonable. If you want a convert, convince me it's real and then we'll talk. That's the deal. Take it or leave it. Frankly, at a certain point, you start to sound so unreasonable that it becomes an act of major generosity on my part just giving you the time of day. You're lucky I'm still even willing to spend my time listening to you present evidence. You can't just be like, oh, you know, I'm just going to eat for two days. No. Okay, if God wanted the food, which is believing in him and following his commandments, to take effect after two days, he would. Which means he doesn't want that. Which means he doesn't want even those people who are gullible enough to give it a try to believe in him. He clearly does not give a shit. If it's so unimportant to him, I don't know why it should be important to anyone else. Now, how much more so divine nutrition? Food for your soul. Uh, well, so the idea is that when you eat, you don't immediately see signs of growth or the lessening of deficiency diseases. Okay, fine. But you do stop being hungry. You have some kind of feedback. You have this very strong urge that's telling you, holy fuck, I need to eat. Holy fuck, I need to eat. And then you eat and you feel instant relief. Like, oh, finally. I feel so much different, so much better. And you're telling me spiritual food doesn't work like that. You can eat for two days this spiritual food and it will have no perceptible effect. I have no urge to eat this food. Nothing is wrong. Everything's fine. Which already seems very, very odd, don't you think, if it's so important, apparently? If it's as important as sunlight to a plant or food to an animal? But then if I choose to eat it, nothing happens? Unless I do it every day for years? After which amount of time I would expect my life and my attitudes to change in some way Way regardless, potentially for the better, and then I have to attribute that to the god, and say, aha, he does exist, and I bet if it changes for the worse, there's some excuse. And in the meantime, I get zero evidence that this soul exists, that this spiritual food is actually some sort of food, that the god that I'm supposedly talking to to get my food exists, that the book that I'm reading out of is anything more than a product of human beings. I get nothing, literally nothing, for a long period of time, even after I start following the religion. This is like a scammer who says, no, 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 I know that you sent me the money for the package that's supposed to show up in the airport locker, but I promise I just need another $2,000 and then it really will be there. Okay, maybe I'll need some Google Play cards and, you know, a few other things, but I promise in a few months you'll see results. No, I'm sorry. Give me a reason to think the book is what you say it is. Give me a reason to think the universe works how you say it works. Give me a reason to think that God is anything at all. If you had a space travel club that claimed to travel to Saturn and back every weekend, I'm not going to join it just because you say so. I want to see some evidence that you can actually accomplish this task. At least show me your spacecraft. Show me it flying around. Otherwise, it's not worth even a moment of my time.
if we are in essence spiritual beings. Another big if you never bothered to demonstrate. Am I supposed to just believe that for no reason too? Nah, sorry, I don't accept your premise, so whatever you say next really doesn't matter. We must also nourish our inner beings every day as we have been instructed by the divine educators. By divine educators, you mean these supposed manifestations of God. Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, Baha'u'llah. And no, that doesn't follow whatsoever. If we're spiritual beings, that just means we're spiritual beings. That doesn't imply that you have to follow prophets. It doesn't imply that you have to somehow eat by following commandments. It doesn't imply anything you say. These are yet more unjustified claims of yours. It's not just the God claim that's at issue here. You have unjustified claims piled on top of other unjustified claims. Each one needs to be addressed. Every single one of them have taught us and have recommended that we pray every day, that we recite the verses of God, his word every day. Maybe? I mean, these people include like Abraham, Krishna, Zoroaster, Buddha. I mean, one of those people isn't even supposed to be a person. Krishna is a Hindu god. In any case, I don't know exactly what these different people had to say on the matter. You know, Zoroaster, Buddha, Krishna. But I would strongly doubt if it was very similar in word or intent. Either way, oh well. So that it illuminates and nourishes our inner being so that it shapes, reshapes our perception of reality, of the world, of our time on this planet, of the purpose of physical reality, of who we are, of, you know, of everybody else, of who, who God is essentially etc cetera, etc cetera. well yeah exactly all this repetition and prayer and meditation and all this stuff is how religions try to modify people's minds to be more malleable without having to appeal to their reason in fact by completely circumventing reason that's the whole point that's why they're there and the fact that this is so important in religion is another reason why i don't buy it if this god was real and loved me and really wanted me to know that it was there really wanted me to have a connection with it it seems by far most likely to me that i would just know it. None of these demands that I participate in techniques of mental and emotional manipulation would be necessary. The god could achieve anything it wanted to achieve far more effectively without them. I mean, okay, it's possible it would be. It's possible that for some reason this god would make its religion look exactly the same as some cult. That it would make weird brainwashing techniques a requirement. Yeah, it's possible, but because that makes it indistinguishable from every other belief that uses similar manipulation, it makes it appear to just be manipulation. If the god existed, I wouldn't expect to have to brainwash myself into some sort of irrational pre-existing belief and emotional investment and confirmation bias just to have any hope of having any evidence whatsoever that it exists at all. If I needed this nourishment for my soul, this soul food of prayer, which requires action from me to feed, you would think I would get soul hungry. Or to go back to your analogy with the plant, you would think I would be like biologically compelled to turn Turn towards God every day for my soul nourishment, even if I didn't understand what was going on. Like my knees just buckle under me, I fall to my knees and I worship God right there on the spot. I'm physically compelled to do what's necessary for me, like the plant. If that analogy is supposed to hold, that's pretty much what should be happening. None of this makes sense to me. None of this seems to me like what I would think is most probable in a universe where this god actually exists and actually wants a relationship. But it seems like exactly what I would expect in a world where people make up these ideas for whatever reason and come up with techniques to make gullible, emotional people follow. This looks exactly like that reshaping our perception, nourishing our hearts, nourishing our true reality. And we need to do it every day in order to experience truth, in order to experience God, in order to experience evidences of his might, his power, his existence. You know, maybe repeating the same nonsense over and over and over works well for you. That was your thing with recite every day, pray every day, you have to do it every day, keep saying it over and over and over and over and over. I know that works for a lot of people, but just because you keep repeating this, just because you keep saying it, doesn't mean I'm any more likely to accept it. I'm gonna reject it every time you say it, because it's absurd. If I were to follow you down this path, it would mean I have no standards, no interest in the truth, only in emotion. It's not going to happen. So that's it for this video. As always, these are just my thoughts, guys. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Oh, well, happy to oblige. In the comments section. Oh, well, I guess I fucked that one up real good.
Anyway, thanks for watching. Weirdly, I feel like I didn't need to say as much as I did because it kind of spoke for itself, but on the other hand, I feel like I probably could have said much more. So if there's anything you think I missed or should have mentioned, bring it up in the comments. Let's try to cover all the bases here if we can. If you like the channel, please do consider supporting with like a couple bucks a month. Patrons, depending on their level, get lots of perks, lots of exclusive videos, uh, Discord calls every month, ludicrously early access usually. Huge thanks to everyone who already made the decision to support. For somewhat early access, sign up to the email list at list.logic.com, and I'll see you next time.